Hello friends, and here we have another A1200. This was brought to me because there's something wrong with it. Now, these days it's difficult to get a hold of one of these for any reasonable amount of money. Um, so my friend Brad has a few contacts, uh, people who have spare parts, and basically this is a cobbled together a1200. It doesn't have any EMI shielding in it, which people tend to get rid of anyway. And um, it didn't have... He basically just bought the motherboard first, bare. And then, uh, and then he found somebody with a case and a keyboard. So here we have a... Like, it's been like two years. I converted uh, some, some PC high density floppy drives to Amiga and these are all tested and good this is a Sony uh, you make some adjustments on the back um, this is before I started making videos so I apologize I usually have a video for everything that you see but not in this case because it was before I started but we're gonna see if this even has a possibility of fitting in here I this isn't really gonna stay here is it <laughs> Okay. Just seeing if things are going to line up. Because what do you do? You take the, the front plate off of here and hope for the best. Move this other stuff. Some screws lined up here. I'm gonna need what is it, M3 or something? Uh, but they're gonna need to be longer ones. Is this one? Yeah, actually, it is. Let's see, that's pretty much right where it's going to go. And uh, let's close the case and you can see if. Oh, yeah, I can't really. Okay, I got the front plate off. And uh, my feeling is I mean, it's going to be ultimately up to Brad what, what we do, what I do. But uh, my feeling is if, is if we can't get this in here without modifying the case. If a case modification is required, that I'd, I'd definitely strongly suggest just going with a, a GoTech. Going, going with a GoTech. Because you can get a GoTech in here without too much trouble. Without modifying the case. Oops, without modifying the case. Okay, so that might be a little closer to what we need. We're hitting just right here on the top. But the question is. It really looks like it's gonna line up. I don't have a problem modifying the drive, you know, cutting, cutting some part of this case. I think that's actually going to work. We just trim, trim this back, and I think we can put this back on there, and I think this this is going to work. Uh, we should probably. Test the floppy. Let me get some floppy disks. Okay, got some ribbon cable. A ribbon cable and a power cable. A little bit too long, but it's good enough for now. Just want to see if I can 
to the eject button. I don't think, I don't think the eject button is going to help us out now. So we're going to have to cut the case back and do something about this eject button. So for right now, looks like this pops off of here pretty easy. Or not. Hmm. Well, that's really close to, uh, it's just barely hitting the edge of that. Hmm. Plus, one thing I noticed is that the disc is not perfectly lined up here. It's going up just slightly, I think. Yeah, and it's really having to do, I think, with this, this side of the drive is sitting up a little higher, probably because it's just, I don't know. Geez, I can't test whether the thing is going to reject unless with this button in the way, and I I don't know how to get that button off. It looks like it has a catch here. Come on, don't break on me. There you go. There you go. Yeah, it kind of bent it a little bit. Well, we might not wind up using that button anyway, so can always make ourselves another one, right? Right there, maybe. Yeah, I think that's better. So, if we just get it mounted in there, good. Alright, well, let's try this. I don't have the LEDs hooked in there, but we should still work fine. Let's see here. That's weird. Pretty sure this drive was working. It seems like it's not configured correctly. Oh, brother. All right, let me figure this out. Okay, so we've loaded off the hard drive. I have this disk full of whatever utilities and we're just going to give it a try here seems like it's working good the only thing left is to find a way to properly mount it in here so we have two things we need to deal with we need to deal with um, Three actually, trying to get more than two screws. You can put. We can get the two screws on the top. But can we get another one here in the bottom? Is there a spot for another screw? No. Unlike the Omega 500, the Omega 500 has a has a has a. Um, sorry, you can't see what I'm doing. Has a screw hole here for mounting. So then number two, we have to worry about this cover. And number three, we have the button that we need to line up, which is um, we might be able to get away with 
trimming a quarter of the button away. And it might slide through. See what I'm talking about? You know, if we just trim a quarter of that away, guess on, I'm going to make a guess on how far I need to cut. I think I got to cut it pretty far because the, um, the top of the case of the Amiga comes like this. Oh, I'm out of battery on that thing. The top of the Amiga case comes like this and then it goes like, it goes in a little bit. So we may as well cut it to this point right here. Something like that. Yeah. As long as we're not really exposing the heads which are over here, you know, it doesn't really matter. blow that off with some air just to make sure we got all the metal filings off and that should do it. It's the eject button. Take about a quarter off, right? That's close enough. Just about close enough. <clears throat> Probably a little more. Yep. Just trying to clean it up a little bit. Okay, let's give these things a try. sits a certain way. Okay. I can tell by the impression. These are actually kind of slotted, you know, so the drive. But there's some marks, witness marks from the screws. And it was like, this was like pushed all the way up. So it looks like we're actually really close. I guess I have to run that screw in there to be sure here. Let's get this out of our way.
Ah, but see, this is when the disc is not in. When you stick the disc in, it is going to um, it's, it's going to pop out even farther. So, and so we should determine the throw of that thing. Actually, it looks fine here, but it's it's the top. Yeah, we're, we're, we're very close. We're very close. The, the one thing about this, this thing, though, is that the only thing that was holding it in was the front part. So we'll probably have to glue this in there in order to make it so that it doesn't. And I guess that would serve to secure it as well. Um, Kind of pushes down there a little more. Let's see. That's really close. I just have to shave another millimeter off of that thing. So let's just check this out. If we can get the lid on there, looks like we're wait, we're hitting something. Okay. Uh, well, maybe, maybe we're not. Here. No, we're not. We're fine. We're fine. So we did a good job on the top. Cut it more than it needed, but it's fine. You know, obviously you can see that there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. We just need to do a little more trimming here. Let me take care of that. Okay. Check it out. It's not the biggest eject button in the world, but it works. It works. I believe that's all three problems solved. I mean, I'm going to put a second screw in there, and I, I think this thing is actually going to stay. Well, technically speaking, the end result would be is if I put the case on. And so here we see a disc that fits in there and everything is mounted so everything's good to go